Here's a related rates exercise that involves a little bit of trigonometry. We are observing a launch here and it says an observer stands 300 feet from the launch site of a hot air balloon at an elevation equal to the elevation of the launch site. The balloon is launched vertically and maintains a constant upward velocity of 20 feet per second. What is the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the balloon when it is 400 feet from the ground? Okay, and then it tells us that the angle of elevation is the angle theta between the observer's line of sight to the balloon and the ground. Okay, well the first thing to do with any related rates problem is to draw a picture and label as much as you can. Okay, well we have an observer observing a balloon. The observer is 300 feet, so 300 feet from the launch site and the balloon goes straight up. So let's call this distance y. And then it does tell us that dy dt is 20 feet per second, so that's good. Okay. And what else do we need? Well, let's, let's put in a theta. So this is the theta that they're talking about, this angle of elevation, right? So when the balloon first launches, when it's on the ground, the, the uh, theta here, the angle of elevation is zero, and then it increases as the balloon goes higher and higher. Let's very clearly write our givens and our goals. So given, and this is an important step. I see a lot of students try to skip this step um, and they get tangled up with what they're actually looking for and they just start trying to solve random things and kind of get lost in the calculation. So it's helpful to write this out. So given, we're given, and I'm really just interested in rates here. dy dt is 20 feet per second. Our goal, we need to be very exact with what our goal is. What is the rate of change of the angle of elevation of the balloon? Whoops, well, I meant to underline that, not cross it out, of the balloon when it is 400 feet from the ground. Okay, so let's be very specific. We're looking for d theta dt was rate of change when at a specific time, because that's going to be different depending upon what time we're talking about here. Well, we want it when y is 400 feet. So I highly recommend not trying to move forward with these related rates problems until you've identified your given and your goal, or all your givens, and there might be several, and your uh, specific goal. Okay, that's step one. I am following specific steps here. Okay, we've done step one. Next, we want to write a single equation that relates all the stuff. Right, so that's what we'll do next, and then we'll use the chain rule to take the derivative of that equation with respect to t, and then we'll finish it out. So we're, we're always in the background, essentially following these steps. Okay, well, what's an equation that relates theta and y and even 300? How about that distance there? So we have these three things, theta, y, and 300. Can you think of an equation that relates them all? Pause the video, see if you can think of that. Okay, well, how about tan theta? Tan theta. Okay, soka toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tan theta equals y over 300. There we have it. We have a nice equation that ties everything together. Once we have that, we take the time derivative of both sides d by dt. So we, we did the relate part. Now we're doing the rate part. A little bit of chain rule here. So we have tan, derivative of tan theta is secant squared theta times d theta dt. dt is, okay, so let's write this as 1 over 300. And then derivative of y is dy dt. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, let's finish it out. We have d theta dt is what we're solving for. So d theta dt. Well, if secant squared is 1 over cosine squared, I can multiply up by cos squared. So we have d theta dt is, how about cos squared theta over 300 times, well, we know that dy dt is 20. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so that d theta dt is changing but we're interested in it at a specific instant in time when y equals 400. Well, you may be saying, that's useless. I don't see a y anywhere in there. Well, 
what we really have is a new triangle then at this instant in time. Okay, so right at this snapshot in time, we have our theta and y happens to be 400, x is 300. And if we can get the hypotenuse, then we can talk about cos theta. Well, the hypotenuse here is 500. Why do I know that? Because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. If you don't recognize that immediately, no problem. Just hit it with the Pythagorean theorem. You can solve for the hypotenuse that way as well. So then cos theta, theta is, okay, well, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 300 over 500 or 3 fifths. Okay, and that's the final thing we needed. So let's go ahead and plug that in and then we'll solve this all out. So we have, uh, let's write this as one over 300. We'll just do a single calculation times three fifths quantity squared times 20. Put that all into a calculator. We'll just keep it like that. You get 0 0.024. Okay, what? What are the units here? Well, the quantity that we just computed is d theta dt. So our units should be units of theta over units of time. Units of theta are radians. So radians, and then what kind of time unit are we working with here? Well, looking up above, we have per second. So it's radians per second. Okay, so it's a wonderful method, and it really encompasses an entire class of related rates problems with changing theta. Essentially boils down to something like this same argument here. So if you get this one down well, It'll help you solve a lot of similar exercises.